Throughout history, humans have developed a number of devices to make work easier. The most notable of these are known as the six simple machines. First, we're going to go over the lever. Then to follow will be the inclined plane, the wheel and axle, the pulley, the screw, and then the wedge. While these machines may seem simple, they continue to provide us with the means to do work that we could never do without them. Because work is defined as force acting on an object in the direction of motion, a machine makes work easier to perform by accomplishing one or more of the following functions. Transferring a force from one place to another, changing the direction of a force, increasing the magnitude of a force, or increasing the distance or speed of the force. To understand simple machines, you first have to understand work. Work equals force times distance. And then work's unit would be either a foot-pound, or it's also considered a newton meter, which is also known as a joule. The joule is named after the British scientist James Prescott Joule. We know that a specific amount of work needs to be completed for a specific task, and then using that work equals force times distance. However, nature does not specify exactly how this work must be accomplished. This enables you to complete the same amount of work with less force by simply moving the load over a greater distance. And that's what we're going to be talking more about in this unit. The amount of work you put into a system with the effort has to equal the amount of work that the system puts out to lift the resistance. So to work simple machine problems, you assume that work in is going to equal work out. This can also be written as the force of effort times distance of the effort is going to equal the force of the resistance times the distance of the resistance then you can manipulate the equation by putting the forces on one side and then putting the distances on the other side. If I only have the distances right here, I can get what is called the ideal mechanical advantage. It is called ideal because we are ignoring all outside forces. We are assuming the only forces will be the effort force and the resistance force. If we are given the forces or measure the forces in the lab here for the resistance and the effort, then we call that the actual mechanical advantage because it is what is actually going to be measured. We hope that the values of IMA and AMA are close. To see how efficient your machine is, you take the AMA divided by the IMA, and you're going to multiply it by 100. The AMA will never be larger than the IMA. So if you um, get a percent efficiency that is greater than 100, you did something wrong and you need to go ahead and redo the problem again.